Hey everyone, it's Thumper the Rabbit Rabbit. Upon completing my component guide, I thought I would get back to making some how-to videos on uh, various builds and setups. And first I'm going to remake one for my old channel, uh, the Practical Power Source Guide, uh, because it seems to be the most popular one from the old channel. And uh, I've just got a little cleaner and a little more simplified here. And it's a good example of how to use uh, multi-type power. Uh, in this case, I got some solar and I got a couple wind turbines over here. How to combine it all together, uh, incorporate a battery backup, and be able to use that based on a threshold trigger so that you can power uh, multiple circuits in your base to run uh, whatever you might need. Uh, today, I'll probably use the examples of you know, some doors and some lights and some other stuff. I'm, I'm not gonna throw it all up here because the video would get too long. But I wanna show you how to craft a uh, basic circuit and I've put all the components on the wall here so I can move a little bit quicker, but I'll wire it up for you so you can follow along. So first of all, um, I'm using root combiners to combine the solar together. That's all on this side. And then I'm combining the solar with the wind. Uh, I've got a combiner over there putting the two wind turbines together and bringing them over. Um, and this is a good combination. If you can afford or found blueprints for these, um, solar is great. Obviously, during the day, it's it's reliable, it's predictable. Uh, wind is awesome because it's usually a lot more than what solar puts out, but it is unpredictable. But you do have it available at night, and that's actually really good for this particular build example uh, because it kind of assumes that you're getting power at night. Um, and you can configure how much power you need before you switch to battery backup. So uh, here's what I'm doing. I'm bringing in the main power uh, into this display that I've set to pass through. All these displays are set to pass through just to show how much power is coming through. So these displays are all completely unnecessary. Um, they're just wasting power by eating one up each. Um, so don't use these in your real build unless you're really into keeping an eye on what your power is because they just waste power. Uh, but I'm using them here because it's going to be easier to demonstrate what's going on. So remember each of these eats up one unit of power. So I'm going to bring my main power into this branch and this branch is where you will configure your threshold to switch to battery. So um, the branch output on a on a electrical branch is the priority. So this has 250 coming in here. The power will go out the branch first for whatever you have it configured to, and the leftover will go out the power out. So this is sort of my main power branch here that I'm bringing over and dropping into one side of this OR switch. And by default, it's set to two, but let's say, um, we're going to need three strings of light or power in the base that are each worth 20 units. So I'm just going to start by setting this to 60. So now of the 260 coming in, we're peeling off 60 this way and the 200 or so left over goes out the power out. So let's hook it up here. We'll see. Yeah, we got 202, 203 left over coming through here. Um, now this is good because I want leftover power. And I'm going to use this branch to split the leftover power to come this way for battery charging. Uh, you really only need 100. Over 100 doesn't matter on charging a battery. I have a little excess here. I could probably split it and charge two batteries if I wanted to get really crazy. But uh, for the moment, uh, you know, it's not always going to be 271. The sun's going to go down. The wind's going to die down. So as long as you got a hundred extra coming through here, that's great because then you can charge your battery at full speed. Uh, so now this is coming into the OR switch and then this is my main power out. So this is the 60 units that I want to use for my various loads. So this I'm going to call, this branch is going to be load number one. This branch is going to be load number two and whatever's left over is going to be load number three. So I got to chain these together. So now we got all this power coming in and we got two units going off to branch one, two units going off to branch two and 50 left over. And I said I wanted these to be 20. So I'm going to set this branch to 20 and then I'm going to set this branch to 20. 
and uh, they're each using one. You can see this a little low because each of these branches uses one unit of power, and so does this switch. And so does this display, which doesn't really need to be here, but it is a loss, so really I need 64 to make up for the loss of these units here. Now I've got 20 units of power on all three of these. So let's say this uh, branch, because it's first in line, it's the highest priority. So if we drop below 60, um, this would die first, this would die second, and this would die last. Um, we shouldn't have that problem in this configuration because we're going to set it up to have the battery kick in if we drop below 64. Uh, but this is your highest priority power. That's that I'd run that to my, you know, doors with all my guns and stuff behind it because blowing people up is obviously the most important thing. And then I'm going to take this branch and run it off to some lights with some uh, planter boxes with a bunch of weed and uh, uh, pumpkins and stuff in it because, you know, I got to eat. And then I can take the leftover power and run it to lights because I don't like stubbing my toe in the dark in a dark, crappy base. Now, you're probably wondering how does the battery get involved here? Well, um, this branch up here has taken all this extra power to go charge the battery, but it by default takes a minimum of two off of this electrical branch here, which is the priority. So I'm going to bring this two units of power over here, plug it into the side of this pass-through, um, the block pass-through. Uh, this blocker here, um, word of advice kids, always put a blocker after your battery. A blocker that is uh, has the active block pass through to block power doesn't act as a load. So you can see battery's not going to count down at all while the blocker is powered on and triggered here. So um, all that extra power is coming in here and it's charging my battery up. We already got 11 minutes on here and climbing. Uh, this is fantastic. So uh, we got a good battery charge going here. And then I'm going to bring the blocker output over. And this is going to the other side of the OR switch uh, because the OR switch is the beginning of my sort of main power output bus and it has to make a decision between using battery power and using the live main power input. Uh, but if this battery kicks in, it's going to put out 100, so it's going to win. So if we turn that battery on, it's going gonna, it's gonna to win in this decision right here. The OR switch always takes the highest of the two inputs. It doesn't combine them. It takes the highest of the two. So as soon as that battery kicks in and there's 100 units coming in, it's going to use the battery. Now you're probably wondering what causes the battery to kick in. Well, earlier I mentioned that this branch is the configured threshold for when the battery kicks in. And the reason I said that is... It's going to take 64 first, and then whatever's left over goes up here to charge and turn off the battery. But the branch is the priority. So if we drop below 64 units of power here, there's not gonna be anything left coming out. And so the leftover as it drops is no longer gonna have any leftover to charge the battery. And when it drops below 64, there's not gonna be enough left for this branch. And when there's not enough left for this branch, boom, battery kicks in. So this is the level, this number here is the level at which you want your battery to kick in if your input power drops below it. So if this drops below 64, that battery is gonna kick in. If it gets above 64, it's going to send the remaining power through here, which is going to kick the battery off. And the OR switch is going to say, oh, battery is off. And I'm going to go back to the power coming in from this side, which should be at least 64 or higher because that's what you set the branch to. So this is your automatic power battery backup circuit that uses your excess power to charge the battery and has a configurable point at which the battery kicks in. Now I'll caution you, don't build this circuit to need more than 100 units. Um, the most you'd ever want to set this to is 99 or probably 98 because then you want your battery to kick in. The battery only puts out 100. So if you build this circuit to use more than 100, um, then you are going to lose power if you kick over to battery. So it'll work. You could have this be 50 and this be 50 and then your lights are the 20 that's left over. 
Uh, but when your battery kicks in, it'll only be 100. So only these two circuits will get powered and there won't be anything left over. So this type of prioritization in cascading your circuits works out really well if it's like you want your first 100 to be battery backed up and the rest doesn't matter. But during the day, if you're bringing in eh, 200 like this, then yeah, you can run 150 over here. Uh, but be cautious because the more you use for this live circuit, the less that's left over to charge that battery. So if I set this and I say, oh yeah, I'm going to use 150 over there and I'm going to set this to 50 for my high priority circuit and another 50 for uh, my grow op. And then I got 45 left over for my lights. Hoo ah, yeah, we're kicking butt now, man. We got lots of extra power, but you only got 39 left. So, and of that, you lose another one for the branch and two for the branch out. So I'm only sending shoot just dropped again now i'm down to 32 30 i'm uh, now i'm only charging my battery at one third of its maximum speed because i'm only putting 30 units in instead of 100. now that may not matter to you um because you may not use this battery very often if you've got some good wind power or whatever then you may have enough live power to run your circuits most of the time and all you need is a little bit of a trickle charge to add some juice to this battery maybe that's all you need great good for you um, the more you put out of here, the faster you're going to charge that battery up to 100 units. After that, it doesn't really matter that much anymore. Um, if you don't believe me that this works, I'll just cut the input power here and boom, we swap over 98 units coming in here. The OR switch says, ah, you win, more power, um, 50 for this. Uh, it would be 50 for this, but you know, I've got some extra crap in here eating up power like these displays. And then there's nothing left over for the lights, but... Uh, I got my power from my gun doors, and I've got most of my power from my grow up. Um, and then, of course, when the wind kicks up and the sun comes up and we get over uh, 150 again, then it's going to switch back over to here. Or switch always picks the better of the two inputs, so um, not only will it kick off the battery, but uh, even if there was still power coming in here and this dropped down um, and it dropped below your 150 input, it's going to turn the battery on but it's still gonna use this input power because this will be 100 and this will be 150. So this is the better source, which is kind of a waste. It means you're running your battery while you still have plenty of input power coming in. But hey, that's how it works if you wanna use a prioritized string with a bunch of extra juice. That's why I say this is a little more practical if you're keeping this whole circuit under 100. I'm just gonna set this back to 64 and that would make a whole lot more sense. If you need more than 100 units of power on this main circuit, just do all this again. Um, have two battery backup systems um, of 100 units each, one for this battery, one for another battery that can have 100 units. Um, and you can take this power coming in and put it through a splitter so that if you've got 200 coming in, then half of it goes to this battery backup system and half goes to your other battery backup system. So play around with it. Um, so this is your uh, practical power main power bus with a uh, battery backup that can supply up to 100 units of power um, when you've got it coming in or when it needs to switch to battery uh, this is not a day night trigger system I'll I'll do another video for the day night trigger uh, later so hopefully this helps if you're just getting started um, you don't have to have wind power you can use all solar for this I know it's cheaper and easier to get uh, but you're guaranteed to switch to your battery at night there so I hope that helps. Uh, good luck. Have fun. Don't suck.